Hello out there in NHI land. This is Julio Coto and president and founder Ernesto Nieto of the National Hispanic Institute broadcasting here from Maxwell, Texas uh, in his cozy office. And actually this summer we have a big milestone on hand. 30 years ago this summer, the very first LDZ pilot program took place uh, in Austin, Texas. And so this is a chance for us to interview Ernesto a little bit about what was 82 like what things have changed and what things haven't changed and more importantly what can the families and LDZ years for this summer 2012 uh, look forward to so I'm just gonna start off right off the bat 1982 what was it about what was it like well I think all NHR programs are kinda of crazy um, it was a bunch of kids it was 162 of them uh, 90 of the students were from the Austin area Austin Independent School District another 30 or 40 uh, we were able to identify and recruit due to the cooperation of St. Edwards University. There was a high school migrant program called CAMP uh, that was on their campus and we brought these kids in. And then the third thing, there was this other group of just kids that were 11, 12, 13 years old who didn't have any idea of what was going on. And they were just invited to participate because we needed more than a hundred to create mm -hmm. a youth session. Uh, the first part took place over at the LBJ school and uh, that was about two days and then the actual legislative session took place in the state capitol. For historical reasons, and I think it's important, there we had as a special guest uh, a senator who became Senator Gonzalo Barrientos. Uh, he was a state representative at the time and got us actually the building, the late Carlos Truan who recently died, regrettably, out of Corpus, was there. Uh, Hugo Berlanga, uh, people like that. And uh, uh, Alfred J. Hernandez was a keynote, and he was the former, former president of uh, LULAC. And he was, by this time, beginning to age. And I remember very distinctly him walking into the chamber and seeing all these kids dressed up in suits and looking businesslike. He just broke down crying. And the reason is because it was a realization that this was the first time in the history of Texas, the entire history of Texas, that the state house had been reserved for Latino kids. And it was quite emotional and historic. And still is today. And it still is. We're the only group of Latinos that has gained access to the use of the capital has become part of the traditions of the state capital experience. Now, what are some of the 30 years, obviously, is a long time, but maybe not so much. What are some differences and similarities that you see um, coming up this summer from the original group in terms of learning, but also in terms of maybe the makeup of the students as opposed to what we're going to see this summer? I think we have smarter kids today, not to say that the kids before were not. Uh, it's just life. I just think we have better prepared kids, uh, more visionary kids than before. Uh, for the 1982 group, there was no precedence for it. There was no, I did it 10 years ago, or, my uh, or five years, or a cousin. Uh, today, it's a huge family of NHIers, and a lot of them participated in the great debate as freshmen, as you know. And so they're there and they have knowledge of it. I think that's number one. The other is that because of technology, students are much more aware. I mean, computers, cell phones, those weren't part of the 1982 experience. Uh, kids had never done this before. Uh, today, because of the way we access information and Google, uh, kids are much more informed, much more aware. Uh, probably the difference, more difference is that uh, the kids who first came uh, in 1982 might have been more ethnic and much more rooted. What do you mean by rooted. that? Uh, they were... First generation they were Not only first generation, uh, but they were more inclined to see themselves as Latinos. Okay. And in, the, in those days, it was Hispanic. Uh, the kids today, because of all of the things that go on in school culture, are, are less apt to see themselves is having a relationship to a particular nationality or ethnic culture. And so they kind of deal with those issues almost silently, but it's very present. On a learning objectives level, what 
did the 82 kids learn that maybe this year some, uh, participants aren't necessarily going to get or learn from us, but what are some things that may be similar that you think are still going to be the same? I think understanding organizational protocol, you know, I, I, I think that, that back then, uh, kids were very concerned about parliamentary procedure. Did I do it correctly? Did I make the right motion? Did I not? There was a lot of corrections uh, involved, uh, making statements over and over. That's still part of the LDZ tradition today. I think today kids are much more expanded in their vision. I think they are able to see a more Latino reality that's global versus the 80s that was much more domestic and maybe even more regional in how they saw the world. They didn't see themselves, uh, for example, uh, leaving Texas today, uh, if, if you were to use it in that context. Today, kids from, come from all over Latin America. And so there's a much more global understanding of issues that are vast or maybe regional or may exist in Mexico or may exist in Panama and also exist here. There's a familiarity and that's cross-cultural uh, that to me makes for a very meaningful dialogue. In terms of the world, I know you've alluded to a little bit, the community, the world in general. What's different? 30 years have gone by since this first group got together there at the Capitol. On a world level or a Texas level, what things have changed? What have you noticed in 30 years time that definitely is going to make a, a difference in terms of the impact for this summer? I think that as, as our societies continue to move forward, back in the 60s and early 70s, race was clearly a barrier to progress. Back in the 40s and 30s and the 1900s, race was clearly a very identifiable barrier uh, to the progression of people. Uh, I mean, there were things that were done uh, where, where it was obvious that Latinos or African Americans were purposely being excluded from things. As we've gotten into the 21st century, those things have fallen by the wayside and we're dealing now with class and class and mobility. And we hear the modern day issues, even in the presidential uh, elections that are going on, that are class driven. And we talk about income distribution. Uh, those issues are very different, much more obscure. What really concerns me is that we seem to be developing a separation of readiness for a modern day world, meaning people who bring the technological readiness to engage in a modern day era versus those who never had the money to purchase the technology, be around the technology every day. Heck, today, my grandkids help me with technological issues that I have with computers or cell phones or whatever we're using. I just call them to help me and they're only 10 years old. Back in the day of the early uh, NHI programs like the LDZ, those issues were not even considered and on the table. And those are dramatically different ways of looking at life, if that's what's the nature of your question. Yes, yes. And I will finally, just to wrap up, 2012, uh, big moment for us. It's, it's going to be a big LDZ class, Colorado, National, New York, uh, Panama, again, uh, is going to be jam-packed. And of course, Texas, uh, with the alumni George and Michelle there at the helm. What can the 2012 LDZers out there watching this video and their parents and their volunteer mentors and coaches expect? And how can they prepare? I think that's a good question, Julio. And uh, this is something that I want parents you out there in parent land uh, to take a look at. You know, we live at a time where we spend less and less and less time with our children. The demands of jobs, professions, the fact that we're constantly mobile, uh, the fact that now children spend time texting while, uh, during dinner time or they spend time on computers in the privacy of their room. There's less communication than ever before in our family system of life. Uh, schools have become the local parentis or the local parents 
rather than the parents. I think that the whole uh, uh, institution of family is on trial and hopefully not at a level of demise, but it's certainly not as strong as it used to be. So what does that mean? When, when kids come to the LDZ, one of the things we want to introduce them to is what, what are phenomenon out there? We call them social forces. What are, what, is, what are the phenomenon out there that is going to influence how they make decisions, when they make decisions, and how they go about looking at what decisions are, are to their advantage or to their disadvantage, and then what phenomenon is out there over which they have no influence. I'll give you an example. What's going on in Greece and Europe is, uh, in terms of economics and finance and the collapse of systems is going to affect Americans one way or another. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect how much we can afford for college. I mean, college loans today, as you well know, are higher than, uh, than car loans in, in the United States, more than credit card loans that the normal citizen has out there. College loans, uh, very much like what happened so, uh, this past last four years, are going to implode and cause a very similar meltdown like the housing market that collapsed on us two years ago. We want young people to be aware of these social forces and to understand two things. One is that it impacts how we live life. Two, that we can actually become a social force ourselves. The experience of the LDZ is an experience very different than the freshman and very different than the Collegiate World Series for seniors in high school. The LDZ specifically addresses the nature of social forces and how to maneuver and how to navigate those social forces. It's right in front of the kids. And I'm not going to get into too many trade secrets as to how that program is administered. But by the time these kids leave on the Sunday following whatever program they attend, they will know something that most kids their age never really experienced. And so I want to tell mom and dad, you made a wise decision in sending your kid to this program. It is life changing. You need to come as a mom and a dad. Take this as a final commentary on my part. We spend less than three minutes a day with our children today in what we call meaningful mentorship communication. Most of the time we spend with our kids correcting them or instructing them. Most of the time correcting them. Yeah, we live in the same households. Yeah, we watch similar kinds of programs. Yeah, we live in different parts of our home. In terms of meaningful exchange, mentorship kinds of of, uh, of conversations that alter social perspectives and are meaningful to the long-term development of the child is becoming archaic and dinosauric in our families. We better be concerned about that. LDZ is a place where kids learn to really appreciate family, really appreciate their values as Latinos, and especially their understanding of what their parents mean to their lives. It's just a great experience. Well, I know. I mean, I'm a product of it myself. 97 New Mexico. Actually, this is my 15-year <laughs> anniversary. So I walked in it 15 years after. So I know it's a big uh, emotional summer for me, just reflecting on the past 15 years. Uh, I know I'll be in New York LDZ. You're going to be starting off at Colorado, Colorado with the group. We got Tino Villarreal and his team out in Chicago at the National LDZ. Of course, those of you that have been with us many years, George and Michelle, our board chair and her husband, George, both alumni, will be taking the reins of Tex LDZ and taking over that capital. Again, I know you'll be there. I'll be at uh, Panama. Uh, and uh, I will probably be at Panama with Hector and Gabriela and the whole team there. Uh, and did we forget one? I think we got New York, Chicago, uh, Colorado, Texas, and Panama. So next summer, Great Debaters 2012, we may have seven or eight options to, for you to choose from. So with that, we leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. And LDZers, we will see you this summer. And mom and dad, we hope to see you there too.